Hello my beautiful angels. And welcome back. Today on this video, this one long shot will be the same texture as ignoring their boyfriends for 24 hours, except it is only focusing on one main ship, and that main ship is Iwoi. There might be a little bit time skip spoiler on the manga, so feel free to leave or skip that part if you feel uncomfortable spoiling yourself. As always, thank you for the people who would proofread my writing for me. I love you all. Special character will be included somewhere around the end. If you don't know Kiroko no Basket, they are another sport anim, that plays basketball. Great plot, and amazing plot twist. It might have the same twist with what Heikaiu had, but I'm not comparing them. They are both equally amazing. As always, I hope you enjoy the video. Without me, the day I fell in love with you, I will I. Part 1. You have to move on Toru. Why? Why did you do it? I had no choice. You should know this. Just answer the question damn it. Why? Knowing that you'd risk your life to save me. It just doesn't sit right with me. It's because I love you. So please just move on. Move on for me. I don't want to see you like this. You think it's easy to move on? I fucking hate you. It's just not fair. Life is always unfair. It's nothing new. Ahahaha. Please live for me. I'll be always watching over you Toru. Please take care of yourself. Don't worry because we will meet again, even if it's in the afterlife. Please. Don't go. Not again. I'm tired of being alone. <music> OMG. Look it's Kise Senpei and Okoa Senpei. In the same room. AHH. My life is now complete. My single lonely heart can't handle this. Hurry get a picture before it's too late. They are most definitely looking at me. Like look at me I'm out. What the hell was that for Oikoaki? No. They are looking at me. Copycat. No. They are looking at me. No. They are looking at me dude. How about we finally find out who's better? Rock paper scissors? Oh you are wrong. 1 versus 1. Normal rules. Best of 5. Bring it. Uh. They are so attractive even when they are fighting. Uh. Here we go again. Every fucking time. I hate it here. Tell me about. Oh I. Shitakura. UHH. Who are they? They look attractive. But their face. Oh god. Shh be quiet. Or they might hear you. Try to smile a little Kashiki. You're scaring my fans. Bro. They are my fans. Alright how about we say that they are our fans. But they are mine. Come on don't be stubborn. Fine. Even though, I clearly won at rock paper scissors. Hey that's only because you cheated. A loss is a loss and you never said I couldn't cheat. It's a draw then. Whatever. Oh. Hi Iwa-chan. There was silence at first before Kise and Akashi looked at each other. The red hair nudges the older. Kise shrugs, sighing in defeat. Okay okay okay. I'm going, alright. No need to be so pushy Akashiki. Oh right, Okoa and Kise just got back from Brazil. PFFT, imagine forgetting that. Not me. You did, didn't you? Bruh, this is what happens when you wake up so late. SHH. They really didn't need to know that. Matsukoa tilts his head to the cheerful setter, trying to be careful with his wording. But um is Oikoa, uh. Akashi shakes his head, smiling sadly at the brunette who was excitedly talking to someone despite the people staring at him. If he's happy, then that's all there is to it. You say that. But has he moved on from... them? Their pronouns are he. Leave me alone. It's been how long? Two years? How does that make you forget his pronouns? Three years approximate. The red-haired. Point guard butted in. I thought it was four years. But go off. I'm surrounded by children. That's not very nice you know. Now that I've seen you in person. You remind me of someone I know. Ahaha. <laughs> now that I've seen you in person. You've seen Akashi Kun bunch of times Maki. But. Now that you pointed that out. Yeah I can see the resemblance. He really does remind me of someone I know. I just said that. And? I'm. Before you two start an argument, care to enlighten me as to who this person is? 
You're so formal. Yikes. Like would it kill you to loosen up a little? Hanamaki thought about it for a second. Um, Hajime. Your face, and personality, and the uh, intimidating aura. Yes. Hajime Iwezumi. Ikuaz Iwa-chan. They both became visibly uncomfortable, a somewhat tense silence enveloping their surroundings. Matsukoa coughed and quickly changed the subject. Isn't it strange that these two met at the airport rather than meeting as roommates in Brazil? MHM. With their fangirls screeching like that. Yeah I don't think so. Their first meeting probably went something like, Hey bro, are those your fans? Yeah, and are those yours? Yup, they are my loyal fans. Cool, but you could clearly tell I have more. Oh I think the fuck not. The amount of times you said fans just now was at the same time annoying and also very accurate. Their ego is higher than my grades will ever be. This is getting annoying. Kisesan, Okuasan. Hurry up will you? We don't have all day. The two previous students of Siege are quietly talk amongst themselves. One of them leaning forward to the other's ear. I swear dude, he's like the reincarnation of him. Matsukoa made a face. He examines the pink-haired male up and down, before face palming and shaking his head in disbelief. Reincarnation? People really believe that a person can come back? Impossible. You actually believe that shit? You know that it's a bunch of bullshit. It's just a bunch of false hope. No. Yes. I don't fucking know. However, if he is the reincarnation of him, I'd like to believe it's real, for the sake of Ikoa's happiness. Since when did you care about that? PFFT. Bro just shut up. Or, buy Ikoa Senpei and kiss a Senpei. I hope you like the cookies I made for you Ikoa Senpei. HMPH, I am really offended. PFFT, don't be dramatic Ryo-chan. Ikoa wraps his arms around Iwezumi. Or, next time I see you kiss a Senpei, I'll make sure to give you some. Make sure to forget sweetie. No. Make sure to bring me some honey wait where's Kurokoki? Akashi walks towards the two with a slightly disinterested look on his face. Following closely behind him was Matsukoa and Hanamaki. Hey. Ikoa, how have you been? It's been a while. Ah uh, hello. Don't forget about me. I'm here to wait where are you taking me Akashiki? Nowhere. The older helplessly struggles, his eyes pleading for help. What? But Ikoa. We will be separated. Help me. Ikoa rolls his eyes and Kisa instantly frowns. The betrayal. Well okay, I see how it is. Just go man. Iwezumi snorts, before acknowledging Ikoa's figure. He had his hands linked around his arms, the familiar sensation of his scent slowly coming back to him. Finally. He's home. It has been a while since he last saw Ikoa. Probably a year now. Just the thought of him being here was unrealistic for him to comprehend, which was very stupid. Because he was right there. His hand wrapped around his arms, those stupid pretty smiles that literally can make anyone go who, and those stupid glorious brunette hair that he would spend most of his times in the mirror just to make it perfect. He was finally here, right in front of him. So Ikora, how are you holding up? How's Brazil? Successful as always? It's Ikora we're talking about Matsu. Why wouldn't he be successful? Exactly, but I've always wondered how you're so successful. Me Naiwa Chan. I'm kidding baby. Just don't pout, it doesn't suit you at all. Besides you look like a baby when you and that's not entirely a good thing. Iwezumi pulled Ikora's lips, and the other turned his head away with a slight bright tinted cheek creeping its way on the taller male cheeks. He scowled, cheeks puff in annoyance. A cute baby? More like a pain in the ass baby, but believe what you want to believe, sugar. Hanamaki slowly backs away with a very concerned look as he tried to observe the scene playing before his eyes. Matsukura, being aware of the situation, immediately smacks his arms, before hauling him back beside him. Damn. Dude be careful. I'm not used to this you know. Wait that sounded so wrong. Oh my god. Ahahaha. <laughs> The black-haired male sighs as he shakes his head in incredulity, before facing Ikoa and Iwezumi. He made sure he was always heedful of his wordings, especially when he's speaking to the brunette. He looks happy. Happier than usual. Is it a good sign? 
We're just happy that you're back Oikora. How long do you plan to stay? He let out a fake and exaggerated gasp at the other's question. Matson, Are you saying you want me to leave? You're so mean. When did I say that? Did I say anything about me wanting him to leave right away? Mappy? Back me up here. Huh? Did you call me? I wasn't listening. I got distracted by that bunny mascot standing over there I should totally get a picture with them OW. Have mercy will you? Stop getting distracted. Yeah but you don't have to hit me. Oh yeah. Oikora. You didn't happen to meet Shrimpy there did you? Or. Were my eyes deceiving me when Akira Kun sent me the selfie of you and Hinata? You know. The one that blew up in Japan. Who would have thought that you two would meet in such a place. But wait on Tobio and Hinata dating. Uh. You should really stop talking dude. The setter's pinky twitches. His head lowered into the ground as he slowly feels the indignation rising up on the tip of his fingers. His teeth sharply grinding against each other. What was that feeling? The feeling of aggravation? Sadness? Fear? Irritation? It was so petty for Oikoa to shift everything to him, but wasn't it his fault? Maybe? Maybe not. The two soon began to panic at the sudden change of atmosphere, exchanging uncomfortably. I'm sorry, did we say something wrong man? What do you mean we? You mean you? Don't drag me into this. No, it's alright, I. I just don't like hearing his name. There was a brief silence followed by a gust of wind. You know it's not his fault Cora, don't take it out on him. We both know he couldn't do anything about it. Look even if he tried to change the past, there was no way he could have prevented that accident. Yeah. Okay, whatever. I'm going. If you need anything just give me a call. We'll be going now Mackie and Matson. I'll see you later. Come on Iwa Chan. The other drags the black haired male by surprise, as he hauls his large suitcase, retreating from the two figures who were left standing there, dumbfounded. What just happened? Turns out, he hasn't moved on from him. But we promised him. Oh yeah the promise is kind of creepy but also sweet, the things you do when you're in love. I question why I'm with you. On the way to Oikoa's house, the two walk hand in hand, their eyes constantly roaming around the street as Iwezumi offers to roll the brunette's heavy luggage. What the hell is inside this suitcase? Is it full of brick or something? It's so fucking heavy. Oikoa pouted. Important things I were. I treasure almost all of my things in there so be careful will you? Be more specific about the special things you have here. Rocks. It could be. Iwezumi sneers at the others, a threatening look consuming his features. I will chuck your suitcase onto the road Oikora. That's so mean. Don't do that. I will literally cry. And that's my problem. How? Iwa. You're supposed to be my boyfriend. Why are you so mean to me? And yet he loved everything about him. Oh god, I'm really out here simping for this man who has the power to shut down my ego. I guess I'm just built different. Why? Do you really want me to treat you like a baby? The other rolls his eyes. The last time I was genuinely nice to you, you repeatedly slapped me with both of your hands. You were yelling give me back Iwa Chan, you imposter. I said give him back. Oh I wasn't that bad. Yeah, and you proceed to treat me as your punching bag, TSK. Because you're such a bully. It's very rare for you to be nice to me and I thought someone had tried to impersonate you. You're doing that on purpose and you? What am I doing on purpose? You're purposely using that tone on the word nice. Stop it, it's stupid. You sound like a chipmunk having a mild heart attack. I do not. Why are you so mean to me? Oh wait, we're here already. Didn't even notice. It has been a while since he genuinely talked to someone like this. But of course with Kise, he could never take the basketball player seriously, especially with how dramatic he came off with their first meeting. Their dynamic was inspirable. I think? Probably not. We were just incredibly stupid. I would love to stick around and say hi to your parents, but I really need to run errands, babe. Wait, what? You're not even. Iwezumi sighs, ruffling his hair. He half smiles at his boyfriend. And Ikoa immediately melted right there. Why does he have to go? 
Doesn't he know how much I missed him? It sounds selfish. However if his errands are more important than me, there is no way I can get on my knees and plead for him to stay. Yeah. Okay, sure. I'll see you later, I guess. Without waiting for his reply, the brunette turned his heel away from him, dragging the suitcase that seems to weigh more than his own body. TSK stupid, do you really think I could ever leave you? Especially with the current state you're in? The taller male felt muscular arms enveloping around his waist his familiar scent abiding in the tip of his nose. There was so much hesitation, and none of them wanted to move. Time froze for them. D didn't you say you had to go? PFFT, as if I'm leaving when you're sad. But I promised you, I'll come back later. I really need to go and buy groceries. Then, I'll go with you. Iwazumi stared at the setter in mild annoyance. Are you serious? You need to rest oh I. What the fuck Shatakura? What are you doing? I just told you. Iwazumi gave Okoa's fangirl a flat look, but of course, no doubt he was ignored by them. Turns out, Okoa ended up tagging along, with his fangirls following. Their annoying screeching caused Iwazumi to have a migraine for the rest of the walk in the grocery store. He couldn't help but chuck an apple at them out of anger. Was he jealous? No, absolutely not. Why would he be? Iwa, at least slow down will you? It's not my fault you're jet lagging because of your stupid fans, it's so annoying. Or, Iwa-chan, are you jealous? Absolutely not. Why would I be jealous of them? They sound like a dying chipmunk with their stupid fangirling. What is up with you with the comparison of chipmunks and humans, Iwa ha ha ha. I've been watching Alvin and the Chipmunk series for the past few months. Seriously? Who would have thought I were would be watching such children's movies? Ahaha. <laughs> TSK. It's not a children's movie. I got bored and the Chipmunks really reminded me of you. Besides, it is quite entertaining. Do you really think I look like a Chipmunk? I mean if I do look like a Chipmunk, that means you find me entertaining enough to watch. Iwazumi looks away realizing what he just said to the brunette. You're seriously annoying, just go fawn over your fans. And you're seriously jealous ahaha, <laughs> just admit it. Never. You just did. I got you. Feeling flustered, the black haired male continued walking, avoiding to look behind. Iwa. Come on. It's cute. Don't be like that. Shut up crappy Koa. Didn't I tell you to stop calling me that? Yeah. I'm sorry. But you're still a crappy guy. Would you prefer shitty Koa? You know I'm open to suggestions. Why you? Okoa Senpei, here I made you a homemade cookie. I hope you like them. Iwazumi whispers to himself. What the fuck am I? I'm literally right here. It's like I'm invisible. PFFT. Okoa san. There you are. Hanamaki san told us that your plane just landed a few hours ago. A familiar black onion-haired male appeared behind Kunami's back. Their hands intertwined with each other. Okoa-san, how have you been? How are you and Iwazumi? We're doing pretty good actually he's right here. Iwa? Oh, gosh he wandered off without me. How's Brazil? I've also heard you were roommates with a basketball player, who also happens to be a model. The older rolls his eyes, before snorting. Yeah, Ryata Kise. Oh, the blonde dude we saw earlier. Oh man, he's like you Ikoa-san, but more annoying. It wasn't that hard to spot him, especially with those fans of his. They know nothing but to ask for his autograph and scream like a chimpanzee that just got kicked in the... The smaller male elbows the other beside him. What? I'm just telling the truth. TSK. ikoa Hey. I didn't think you'll be here around this time. Come here for a second. I want you to meet someone I know. He gave the two an apologetic look, and Kunami just nodded in acknowledgement. We'll see you later then, Okoa-san. Bye, Okoa-san. Okoa-ki meet Midorimaki. He was the vice captain and shooting guard of the generation of miracles. Okoa looks at the taller figure beside his friends. There wasn't much of a height difference, but Okoa felt like they were towering over him. 
Midorimus stares through Oikora, as his bandaged hand smugly covers his glasses. Whoa, what the hell? I just got goosebumps. What is up with Kise and his friends having those types of vibes? Hey, you must be Oikora Toru. I'm Shintero Midorima. As for what you can call me, Midorima is fine. Oikora gulps, bowing in acceptance. See, you guys are getting along. Wait, is that Chibi I mean Shoyo over there? Kise raises an eyebrow, both him and Midorima swiveling their head to look. You mean the human tangerine you met in Brazil? You also met him, idiot. Oikora runs off to the orange-haired male who is oddly looking lost, whilst holding a big gigantic guitar on his back. Since when did Shoyo can ever carry a guitar let alone be that tall? As soon as he slowly approaches the figure who seems to be the same height as him, he taps his shoulder. Shoyo kun The other flinches in shock, before timidly pivoting his heel to turn to look at the person. I... I think you have the wrong person sir. Oikora-san, you're back. Oikora froze. He began to feel his blood boiling, his fist clenched in frustration, venom lacing in the tip of his tongue. Oh, if it isn't Tobio-chan, great day to see you here. Speechless Kajima. It should have been you. Sorry. You gotta speak up man cause I can't hear you. It should have been you. 